Hey, it's Darius, and congratulations to I-75ers who passed the CPA exam this month. It's been a record month around here. Look at how many finished the exam this month. If you didn't pass, don't get mad. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll save a spot on here for you next month. All right, here's a sim on adjusting and correcting entries. And here are the instructions. For each item numbered 1 to 10, prepare the adjusting slash correcting journal entry that needs to be made on December 31st, year 1. If no adjustment or correcting entry is needed, choose no entry needed. Here's question 1. Supplies are purchased by Mason Corp for 10000 in July of year 1. At the end of year one, $3,000 of supplies were on hand. Prepare any adjusting slash correcting journal entry needed December 31st, year one, or choose no entry needed. So we know the supplies were purchased July of year one, and when they were, the journal entry was debit to supplies and credit to cash for the full amount of 10,000. How do we know that that entry was made? Well, it didn't tell us that they made any errors recording that original entry. So we have to assume that in July, when the supplies were purchased, the right entry was made, which would have been a debit to the current asset supplies and a credit to cash for the full amount of 10000 Now, the facts indicate that only 3000 of the 10000 are still on hand. The other 7000 must have been used. Therefore, the adjusting entry, December 31st, year one, should be a supplies expense debit and a credit to supplies. And they're not the same account. Supplies expense is an income statement account. It's an expense. Supplies, the asset, was set up for 10000 in July. And now we want to reduce that to show that only 3000 of supplies are still on hand. So this would be the proper adjusting entry needed at year end. There's no correcting entry needed because no mistake was made, but there is an adjusting entry needed to bring the accounts up to date at the end of the accounting period. And what accounts have to be brought up to date? Well, certainly the supplies asset is no longer 10,000. It's now only 3,000, it says. So we have to reduce it by 7,000. And then the supplies expense of 7000 needs to be recognized on the income statement because the current asset supplies has turned into an expense, or at least 7000 of the supplies has turned into an expense. The other 3000 is still an asset. So the question one asked, what's the journal entry that needs to be made for the adjustment at December 31st, year one? And it will be a debit to supplies expense and a credit to supplies. Notice that all adjusting entries include one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Now, you know what else the exam could ask for here? They could say, what if this adjusting entry was not made? Tell me about the impact on expenses, revenue, net income, assets, liabilities, working capital. So we got the right answer for question one. Here's the journal entry, but what if it wasn't made? That could also be part of the sim. So now you'd have to analyze even further and say, if this adjusting entry had not been made at December 31st, year one, then expenses for year one would have been understated by 7,000 because the supplies expense would never have been recorded. And that means that net income would have been overstated by 7,000 because expenses and net income, they have an inverse relationship. So if we would have understated expenses, we would have overstated net income. And then current assets, if we didn't make this entry, would have been overstated by 7,000 because the supplies account would have been 7,000 too high. And if we overstated current assets, working capital would have been overstated by 7,000. And you have to know that working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And as current assets go, so goes working capital. They have a direct relationship. So if we never made this entry, current assets would have been overstated by 7,000 in year one. So working capital would have been overstated by 7,000 in year one. You think they'll ask you something like this on the CPA exam? Oh yeah. So we have 10 of these questions 
in this sim, let's go on to question two. Question two, a one-year insurance policy was purchased by Hansen Corp on June 1st, year one, for 6000 At the time of purchase, Hansen Corp made the following entry. They debited prepaid insurance and credited cash for 6000 Is that the correct entry that should have been made? Yes, because at the time of purchase, that insurance policy has not expired yet. No expense should have been recognized on June 1st of year one. Instead, it should be all balance sheet. Prepaid insurance, that's a current asset. That's a balance sheet account going up. And then credit to cash, that's a current asset going down. And question two says, prepare any adjusting slash correcting entry required December 31st, year one, or choose no entry needed. All right, so we know that the entry made on June 1st of year one was the proper entry. So there was no error made, but there is going to be an adjusting entry needed December 31st. Why? Because the prepaid insurance account is at $6,000 as of June 1st and it'll still be at 6,000 December 31st if we don't adjust it. And the reason why we have to adjust it is because insurance expires, and it expires at a rate of 500 a month here because it's a $6,000 policy to cover 12 months. So insurance expires at a rate of 500 a month, and seven months have expired from the time this policy was purchased, June 1st to December 31st. And this is where finger math comes in on the exam. Don't be afraid to use finger math and count. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's seven months. So $3,500 should be expensed for insurance at year end. So the adjusting entry, December 31st, year one, debit insurance expense, $3,500. Credit prepaid insurance, $3,500. One income statement account, one balance sheet account. That's our adjusting entry. And the exam could ask, what if this entry was not made at year end? How would that impact year one accounting records? So if this adjusting entry were not made at 1231 year one, expenses for year one would have been understated by 3,500. You would have left out an insurance expense. Expenses would have been understated. Now, if expenses were understated by 3,500, then net income would have been overstated by 3,500 because of the inverse relationship between expenses and net income. Then what about current assets? This prepaid insurance account would have been too high if we didn't credit it for 3500 So current assets would have been overstated by 3500 if we didn't make this entry. And as a result of that, working capital would have been overstated by 3500 Why? Because current assets and working capital have a direct relationship. As current assets go, so goes working capital. So in question two, we had a deferral of expense. We paid for the insurance policy on June 1st, but we didn't expense it right away. A deferral is cash now, income statement later. So June 1st, we had the cash, and then December 31st, that's when the expense needs to hit the income statement. Question three now, year one cash collected in advance of services totaled $6,000 for Tapper Corp, December 31st, year one. Cash collected in advance of services during year one was 19,000. Prepare any adjusting slash correcting entry December 31st, year one, or choose no entry needed. So here they collected cash in advance during the year, 19,000. And at the end of the year, they say 6,000 of that is still unearned. So the first thing to recognize here is when cash is collected in advance all year, the entry that was made during the year was debit cash credit unearned revenue. An unearned revenue is a current liability. Cash now, income statement later. This is a deferral of revenue. So 19,000 was collected before it was earned all year. And then they told us in the facts that 6,000 was still unearned at year end. That means the other 13,000 must have been earned before year end. So the adjusting entry needed December 31st would be to reduce the liability unearned revenue and increase revenue. Why 13,000? Because 19,000 was collected in advance and wasn't earned yet when it was collected. We called it unearned revenue. And then if 6,000 was still unearned at year end, that's still in the liability. 
then the other 13,000 of unearned revenue must now be earned as of December 31st, year one. And you know what the exam might ask next. What if this entry was not made at December 31st, year one? So if the adjusting entry was not made December 31st, year one, then revenue for year one would have been understated by 13,000. And that would have led to net income for year one being understated by 13,000 because of the direct relationship between revenue and net income. Revenue would have been understated, so net income would have been understated. What about current liabilities, this unearned revenue account? If we didn't debit the unearned revenue for 13,000, then current liabilities would have been overstated by 13,000. And if current liabilities would have been overstated, then working capital would have been understated by 13,000. Why? Because we know that as current assets go, so goes working capital. Current assets and working capital have a direct relationship. Therefore, current liabilities in working capital have an inverse relationship. So if the adjusting entry were not made, we said current liabilities would have been overstated by 13,000, then working capital would have been understated by 13,000 because there's an inverse relationship between current liabilities and working capital. So question number three was a deferral of revenue where we collected the cash in June, but in June when we had collected the cash, we hadn't earned it yet. So cash now in June, but income statement later in December when it's earned. All right, question four now. On March 1st, year one, Sable Company paid 12000 for a one-year office rent in advance. The accountant erroneously expensed the full 12000 on March 1st. What is that? That's an error. They debited the expense and credited cash for 12000 instead of setting up a prepaid rent account. Prepare the adjusting slash correcting entry needed on December 31st, year one, or choose no entry needed. So in March, they should have deferred the expense, but instead they recognized 100% of the expense. And now it's December 31st. It's too late to go back to March and fix it because a lot of this office rent that was paid in advance has now expired because now we're at December 31st. And the prepaid rent was never set up back in March because they told us the accountant erroneously expensed the full 12000 on March 1st. So what do we do at year end? First, we see the entry that must have been made back in March where they debited rent expense and credited cash for 12000 since they told us they erroneously expensed the full 12000 on March 1st. Now, the rent covers 12 months, they tell us. So 12000 divided by 12 months equals $1,000 a month that rent should expire. So this means that since March 1st, $1,000 a month is incurred for rent expense. Now, how many months of rent expense have actually been incurred from March 1st to December 31st? Finger math again, that's 10 months. If you count from March 1st to December 31st, 10 months at 1,000 a month, $10,000 should be expensed in year one for rent, not all 12,000. The remaining $2,000 should be in prepaid rent at year end, and we need to adjust for that because right now there is nothing in prepaid rent. So our adjusting slash correcting entry December 31st, year one, would be a debit to prepaid rent for $2,000 and a credit to rent expense for $2,000. And you know the exam, they'll ask, what if this adjusting correcting entry was not made? So if this entry wasn't made at year end, what would be the impact on the accounting records? What would be the impact on revenue, on expense, on net income, on current assets, on current liabilities? and working capital. And if you think you know, leave it for me in the comments or community section. This sim on adjusting and correcting entries is right out of the I-75 FAR course. And if you found this video helpful and want to see the end of it, we only did questions one through four. There's six more of these, questions five through 10. So if you want to see the rest of it and more videos like it, Go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on the right road to passing far. Get on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll leave a link in the description.